Well, so far, the only bit of hope that's come out of this uh, Davos conference this year is from the Icelandic president, who's standing alongside me, Olafur Ragnar Grimson. Um, Mr. President, why are you such a beacon of hope? Why has uh, Iceland survived where Europe has failed? What are you doing differently? I think it surprises a lot of people that four years ago we were exhibit number one uh, of uh, a failed financial system. But now we are back on recovery with uh, economic growth and very little unemployment. And I think the primary reason is that we were wise enough to realize this was also a fundamental social and political crisis. But above all, we didn't follow the uh, traditional uh, prevailing orthodoxies of the Western world in the last 30 years. We introduced currency controls, we let the banks fail, we uh, provided support for the poor, we didn't introduce austerity measures of the scale you're seeing here in Europe. And the end result, uh, four years later, is that Iceland is enjoying uh, progress and recovery uh, very different from the other European countries that suffered from the financial crisis. But with your policy of letting the banks fail, would that have worked for the rest of Europe? I think so because as I've often asked people, why do they consider the banks to be the holy churches of the modern economy? Why are private banks not like airlines and telecommunication companies allowed to, to go bankrupt if they have been conducted in an irresponsible way? The theory that you have to bail out banks is a theory about bankers enjoying for their own profit the success and then letting ordinary people bear the failure through taxes and austerity. And people in enlightened democracies are not going to accept that in the long run. It wouldn't work for the UK with their reliance on the financial sector, though, would it? Well, this is an interesting question because one thing we learned after the collapse of the banks in Iceland, that the Icelandic banks like the British and the Americans and other banks have in fact become high-tech companies, hiring engineers, mathematicians, computer scientists. And when they fail, uh, the innovative sectors of our economy, the IT sector, the high-tech sector, in fact blossomed and have been doing much better in the last three years than ever before. So the lesson of that is that if you want your economy to be competitive in the innovative sector of the 21st century, a strong financial sector that takes the talent uh, from these sectors, is even a successful financial sector, is in fact bad news if you want your economy to be competitive in the areas which really are the 21st century areas, innovation, technology, IT. President Grimson, thank you thank very, you very much, much indeed.